Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, Math Minute with Mr. Larson. Uh, we'll try that. How's that? Put some alliteration. We're, uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, compound events. We've done some probability uh, before. We've done uh, finding the probability of, uh, of events, of singular events. Now, what if there's multiple events? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. So, uh, get me out of the way. Let's see uh, if I can make some sense about when you have multiple events going on. For example, I've got two dice. Here. Let's say, uh, you know, the one dice. What's, what's the probability that I'm going to roll a three? Well, the probability of rolling a, a three is one out of six because there's one three on the dice. And then what, what about, what, what's the probability of rolling a four? Well, rolling a four is a, is a one out of, out of six. So the question is, what's the probability of, what if I rolled a three and then a four? When I rolled this dice and then this dice, well, there's a, a real easy step on, on doing it, but I, I want to explain why. Why is the answer what it's going to be? Well, because all the probabilities, all the possibilities are on this first dice. I could either roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? And then on this, and I, maybe I'll put it on the three because that's what I'm going for. And then on the second dice, the probabilities of, of you know, I, that I could roll on the second dice, I could either get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So on this one, you know, this, this could be a, What's the probability I get that exact one? Well, let's see. The probability is getting this exact one. We know that there's, we know that there's one way to get that that three and then a four. But how many probabilities are there here? What what are the total possibilities? Well, I could roll one and then any of those. That's that's six probabilities. Or I could roll a two and then any of those. Well, that's another six probabilities. If you can kind of imagine a map. Or I could roll a three in any one of those. That's another six probabilities, possibilities. And four in any of these, that's another six and six. But there's 36 possible ways uh, or possible answers when I roll these dice. Sometimes people do it this way. I could get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then I could get on my second dice a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then if I mapped all those out, each of these are possibilities. So you can see that there's 36 possibilities there, and only one of them is the three first and then the four. Well, the way to solve this, the way to, to work out these all these possibilities, figure out the probability of the first one. Probability of the first one, that's, uh, that's one out of six. Then figure out the probability of the second one. That's, uh, that's one out of six and then multiply them together. One times one is one, and six times six is 36. That is the probability of getting a three and then a four. And if I wanted to find out the decimal of that, the decimal equivalent, one divided by 36, change the format of the number. So the percent is point zero two eight if I round it off. Or if I move it over a couple places, 2.8%. Three different ways to write a probability for independent compound events. Independent means that you know th this item does not depend on this at all. They're, they're, they're both completely independent of each other. Rolling a three and then rolling a four, they have nothing to do with each other. And that's how we find the probability of compound events. What if I wanted to find the probability of getting an even number and then an odd number when I roll the dice. Well, first of all, I'll find the probability of an even number. And on this one, we know that it's uh, there, there's three evens out of six. And then of an odd right here, the probability of rolling an odd, same thing, it's three out of six. Then you multiply them together, so you know it's six. No, it's not six, it's nine. When you multiply them together, it's 9 36. And when you reduce that down using your calculator, it's 3 12 And you can reduce it again to 1 fourth. There's the probability. Your calculator will give you a 0.25 or 25%.
to get an even number and then an odd number. Well, what's what's the probability of getting uh, probability of getting either a one through a four on the first one, and then getting a, a one through four again? So what's the probability of one through four and then a one through four? Well, for this one, that would mean four out of six. Four ways to get one out of four. One or one through four. And then on this next one, one through four, the probability of getting one through four again, is four out of six. Multiply them together to get 16, 36. Four goes into both of them. So the probability is four ninths or on your calculator point, four, four, four on forever or 44.4%. So it's just a matter of finding each probability and then multiplying them together. That's how you find the probability on compound events. Just to spend a couple more minutes on it, what if I've got a spinner? And this spinner is a one, two, three, four. And let's say this spinner is a one through eight. So what's the probability of getting, say, a, a three and then, a, and then an even number? How about that? Well, the probability of getting a three is uh, it's one out of four. And the probability of getting an even number, there's, there's four even numbers there out of eight. And they just multiply them together. One times four, four times eight. The calculator can do this. That is one eight. Or if you type in your calculator, point one two five or 12.5%, whichever way you prefer looking at it. Compound events, independent compound events, just find the probability of each item and multiply them together. That's it. Hopefully that makes a little sense and hopefully it helps you understand independent compound events. Have a, have a great and wonderful day.